you guys my name is Brittany and welcome back to my youtube channel you guys in today's video i will be sharing how i plan my homeschooling year so if any of you guys are new here to my channel again my name is Brittany. i'm a homeschooling mom to three girls i will be entering in my fourth year of homeschool you guys <laughs> this upcoming homeschool year i will have a sixth grader a kindergartner and a pre k -er. so i just really wanted to walk you guys in the steps that i take in planning my homeschool year this is going to be a video that's going to be broken down into two parts in today's video I'm going to share with you how I schedule out my year at a glance. So like my whole year overview of how I plan that out. I'm going to share with you guys my um, quarterly plans that I do because I do follow the Sabbath homeschooling schedule in my homeschool where I do six weeks on and we have a one week off break and I will get into further details uh, in that later in today's video. And I'm also going to share with you guys my daily schedule, like my daily flow. Um, I really feel like I uh, I love to, I guess, target those three main areas in my beginning planning process because it really helps me figure out everything else. Um, in my second planning video, I will go over like my curriculum overview, how I break down each piece of curriculum for each child um, and things like that and how I actually plan out my quarter. So uh, that will be like a more detailed video and I'm gonna do that in my part two video. So you will really get a good glimpse of me planning out the start of our homeschool year and I think I really want to make more planning videos this upcoming homeschool year so you guys can really see um, I guess how I planned out my quarter and then when I do my monthly update you'll kind of see what we actually tackle versus what I actually plant because those are really cool videos to watch um, so for me in the state of Georgia um, I do have to follow a specific homeschooling requirements and I think that's my first tip that I will give you guys and I know you hear it on repeat all the time which is look up your state standards and I definitely will recommend you guys to look up your homeschooling state standards and I always look them up yearly because you never know if any um, state requirements or any of your homeschooling laws may change yearly. So I definitely make sure I go on to um, the Georgia Board of Education's website. I typically don't go on HSLDA. How It's a good hub. However, I like to go to my specific uh, state's website because you get more details about the specific laws. And if any of you guys are our Georgia homeschooling families, I will go ahead and link the website that I use. Um, in this website, we also have our Georgia Declaration of Intent form that we have to fill out for the state of Georgia. Pretty much, we're just notifying the uh, state of Georgia's Board of Education that we are homeschooling our kiddos. It's a simple form that we have to fill out um, where we have to put our child's name, their age, our address. Um, we have to put the dates that we intend to homeschool. So uh, for the state of Georgia, we have to homeschool for 36 weeks or equivalent of 180 school days. And when we fill out our Georgia form of declaration of intent, we have to give specific dates. And what I typically do is I put in the maximum amount of dates that I can. So for me, for the state of Georgia, I put our start date for July 3rd, 2023, and our end date of June 30th, 2024. So pretty much I'm giving myself a full year to meet the 180 day requirement uh, of days to homeschool. Um, so I really like giving myself that huge buffer. So even though I'm not starting my homeschool year on July 3rd, anything that I do, because I am a year round homeschoolers that I uh, would say, okay, this was considered a full homeschooling day, I will go ahead and check that off as one of our homeschooling days. Um, so uh, that is like how I fill out my Georgia Declaration of Intent because I get so many questions about that. Um, now for me, I am in a testing year. For the state of Georgia, we have to do standardized testing every third year starting off at the third grade. So that means that I have would have had to do a standardized test for Brielle, my oldest daughter, in the third, and now we're in the sixth grade. So um, typically we have to pick a test supplier, and I will go ahead and link down below in my description box test suppliers uh, that is approved for the state of Georgia. And for me, I'm still trying to figure out which test I do want to use this upcoming homeschool year for Brielle. I'm thinking about either doing the MAP test 
or doing the Stanford 10 test. The difference between those two is the MAP test will test her in um, reading, math, uh, reading comprehension, and language. However, the Stanford 10 test will uh, test her in all of her subjects across the board where she will be doing reading, math, language arts, science, and history. So um, my husband is actually leaning more towards doing the Stanford 10 test since we have always tested her reading, language, and writing just so we can get a bigger overview of how she is doing in history and in science and um, I'm kind of like indifferent I really don't know so those are two test publications that are approved from the state of Georgia that uh, we will be looking into using at the end of the school year and I do my standardized testing in May which is typically our end month for our school year uh, so you guys I'm gonna go ahead at this point and flip you guys around I'm gonna share with you um, our calendar I'm gonna share with you my planner and all the nitty-gritty things of our planning out my homeschooling year part one okay you guys this is actually my year at a glance schedule um, I decided to go ahead and save you guys like the time of me actually like highlighting and showing you guys like the breakdown and how I actually plan out my year to just show you guys my printable so I typically print off this paper right here this is a free printable from paper trail and I will go ahead and link this down below uh, because if you don't have a homeschooling planner this is a perfect way for you to, um, I guess, plan out your overview of your year for completely free. Um, and this is kind of like what I did for a while because last year was really my first year using a homeschooling planner. So um, yeah, so this is how I would plan out my homeschooling year. So this is actually my second year doing the six weeks on, one week off schedule. And this is how my year overview looks. Now I am very flexible with this schedule because things can change and this is how it looks right now but um, I may decide I want to start school a little bit later or not so this is just um, an overview so I'm gonna zoom you guys in so you can kind of see my actual schedule a little bit better but uh, right now I kind of pushed us back our tentative start date is actually going to be on July the 24th and what I do is I actually count out six weeks from there so this is one two three four five and six so our first week break that we're going to be having is really cool. It falls on Labor Day week. So which is really cool. This is our first week off. So we did six weeks strong. And um, then I kind of like go from there. So then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Here goes our like fall or October break right when we're getting like fatigued. <laughs> and then uh, I love scheduling us out like this for November where I split up our six weeks. So we'll do three weeks and then we'll have our whole week off for Thanksgiving. And then uh, we have four, five, and six. Now I went ahead and I have an extra buffer week right here. And I'm going to share with you guys why I went ahead and have seven weeks in this term instead of six. Here is our Christmas break that I typically do. We typically take two weeks off for Christmas and I love having our Christmas break go into January because this is Alana's birthday, my baby girl's birthday, and I love having that week off to like clean and declutter my house and to really have and start off a good year. And typically like around Christmas time after Christmas is when I kind of like wanna do a house reset. So that's typically the time that I use this first week in January to do. And I don't really feel the pressure to like come in first day of the year, starting strong with our homeschooling year. So uh, from here, because I have this seven week buffer, I will only do uh, five weeks. And this is really good because when you're starting off your homeschool year, you're kind of like tired. You want to, you know, uh, start off strong, but I typically give us this buffer. So right here in February, we will have our week off and then kind of going from there. Right here, I have another kiddo's birthday. Leia's birthday is right here. And I decided since her birthday was on Thursday, we'll go ahead and take off a Friday. And then uh, it'll kind of like lead into like our spring break right here. So our, our spring break is the first week of April. Then I have us doing our last six weeks strong. And typically right here this last week, we typically won't be doing curriculum for my oldest daughter. This is the week I typically use for testing. So we will be actually finishing off all of her curriculum on the 10th of May. And then right here is testing. And then this is our two week break that we take in preparation for like our summer school or our summer schedule because I do like us to do a summer schedule. So this right here, I have it blocked off as a buffer because at the beginning of the video, when I was telling you guys how I have 
from July 3rd all the way until technically the 30th, but I'm going to say 28th because that falls on a weekday to get 180 school days for Braille. So if we have any sick days or anything like that, uh, these are like my buffer days. So I can push back this into June. So I have all the way up until June to count a school day, which I love that flexibility. So even though this is my schedule that I have planned, if I have anything that changes, I definitely have room to change, to shift things around. So um, yeah. Okay, you guys, I forgot to mention in these six week buffer that I have on our weeks off, I do want us to do some field trips this year. And here are some of the field trips that I mapped out for us. The TELUS Museum, we actually already went to the TELUS Museum on July the 6th. So since we did that, and we were at the museum for about four hours, we uh, watched a, like a live show in the um, planetarium. I'm actually counting that as a school day for Brielle. So that's why I have it blocked out on my calendar this 6th. That's what that means. So um, we already did our first field trip of the school year I have us set up to go to the Martin Luther King Center and tour his house since we are in Georgia I want to go to the Children's Museum now this one's more geared towards my younger kiddos um, because it's not really much for Brielle but hopefully she'll be okay tagging along in this you know adventure with us uh, I have the um, Atlanta Zoo where I want us to go to because we get free zoo tickets every summer so we're going to utilize our free zoo tickets um, I have us going to the National Center for Civil and Human Rights Museum which is a really cool museum that's downtown uh, next to the Georgia Aquarium and I've always seen it they have great artwork displayed there and I think Brielle will love that one and then the Fernbank Science Museum of um, it's like a science museum and natural history museum I think they will enjoy that all and that's like for all ages so these are six field trips that I have planned so hopefully I can squeeze them in in between this school year so technically I already did one so um, anytime we have a week off I definitely want to go ahead and um schedule out for us to um, do one of these field trips. And for the MLK Center, you guys, uh, Martin Luther King Day in January, that would be a great time for us to go to the MLK Center. So that will probably be a field trip I would do in January. Um, so yeah, so uh, these are like some of the field trips that I have scheduled. Tentative, hopefully we can get to them. If not, this is just a plan. So you guys, this right here is my homeschooling, like my weekly and my daily schedule for my kiddos and how I have broken down things. I'm really happy that I have done summer school with the kiddos and we've been, you know, dabbling into a little bit of phonics and reading for uh, my kindergartner and then for my sixth grader, Brie. We've been just doing a little math and grammar and reading. I mean, reading across the board for everyone. So I'm really able to kind of like gauge like the flow that I can do, especially uh, with my big age gap with my kiddos. So um, this right here is, uh, again, my homeschool schedule. This is a free template from Canva. So right here, I have scheduled for Brielle to go ahead and do her math because she can do that independently without me. And then we will officially start off our school day with our younger ones after they've gotten dressed and everything like that at nine, where we will go ahead and do our Bible, morning time, breakfast, things like that. After Bible, morning time, we will clean up from breakfast breakfast and then that will be Alana and Leia's um, morning calendar time. For Brielle, she can go straight into all of her independent work. So I have fixed it grammar word roots. Her Oak Metal English, she definitely will be able to start that off on her own because she can go ahead and start doing her assigned literature reading or any assignments on that she can do independently because this curriculum is written towards the student. Uh, during that time while Brielle's working independently, I'm going to kind of be switching off between my younger two doing Doing math with them. Um, I have Brielle still again doing uh, language arts from 1030 to 11, however long it takes. Uh, my kiddos, the younger ones, will get a break. Um, and then I will go ahead and do phonics with both of the younger ones and handwriting with Leia. So as you guys can see, the younger kiddos, they're pretty much done after about like what, an hour and a half? <laughs> and they are free to do independent play. This is when I will come in between 11 and 1130 with Brielle, check over any work from English. English, and we may or may not start um, history or science. It just depends. And uh, from there, we will, um, I guess, depending on like, it just depends on the day, you guys, because she may have all this stuff done, completed, and we can go into that. Or I may have to check and work a little bit longer on English. It just depends. 
So uh, what I have right here is we typically do lunchtime uh, between uh, 1130 and 12. My kiddos are ready to eat lunch. And this is a typical time that I will put our read aloud on uh, for us to listen to on Audible. We take a big break. We go outside. Uh, sometimes I just play music if it's raining. The kids dance. Uh, they get all their wiggles out. And my younger two will go down for quiet time after we have like this, you know, big break in between our school day. Uh, uh, then I will I have to slot it out for Brielle to be either working on history or science. I typically do history and science two days out the week. So like Monday, Tuesday would be a science day and then history would be Wednesday, Thursday uh, is typically how I schedule it out because I don't want Brielle to be doing all five of her subjects every single day. Um, I like us to kind of like do our core, which is math, language, vocabulary, uh, grammar, all of that all together. And then uh, we kind of go into either history or science because we can really focus and hone in and on those two subjects for two days and kind of like uh, go from there. It really worked out well last year. Uh, during this time right here, uh, I have our study hall period. And if you guys seen my middle school changes, this is the period where we're going to be working on any type of like study hall skill, note taking and things like that with Brielle. I have that time carved out. Uh, after quiet time for my younger kiddos, we will go into our snack time. Brielle will go into creative writing, piano. She's doing Spanish, you guys. She's been really, really enjoying doing Spanish over the summertime. So we're just gonna go ahead and take that into our school year. Uh, from four to seven, again, it's free play, technology time, family time. And then uh, Brielle does her independent assigned reading and fun reading in the evenings. Then for the younger kiddos, bedtime at eight for the younger ones and Brielle's bedtime is 9 30 since she's older so uh, this is our schedule for Monday through Thursday on the back right here I have our schedule for Friday and it pretty much looks the same as far as math and our Bible and morning time the only difference is is Brielle's load is a lot lighter I like to keep this day lighter because if it's any assignments that we needed to drag over to Friday that's what we do on Fridays Fridays is like our library time our enrichment time um, our homeschool hangout time so I like to keep Fridays a lot lighter so uh, she would typically do reading detective uh, for my younger kiddos um, I'm not going to be doing math or phonics with them on Friday Fridays. We're just going to read on Fridays for them. And this is their messy art time. On Fridays for Brielle uh, is when she's going to be doing um, her music curriculum and or art for her as well. We have a lot of free play, outside reading, creative writing, piano, Spanish, all the same things. It's just Friday is our typically lighter day, whatever we didn't get to on uh, Monday through Thursday, it kind of falls onto this day. And um, this is kind of like how I like to schedule it. And you guys, by it Friday, you guys, I don't know about you, but I'm just burnt out and I'm done. So I really like the lighter load on Friday. So again, I will go ahead and put the template that I found for this one free and link it for you guys below. But this is our Monday through Thursday schedule. And then this is our Friday schedule and how I tackle out our homeschooling uh, days on the daily. Okay, you guys, this is my homeschool planner that I'm going to be using. I think I already shared it with you guys in my last video. What I did was I went ahead and I took off the bind it and I spiral binded it myself. I was so nervous, you guys, but it actually came out okay. I made a few mistakes, but it was my first time. It's perfectly fine. So this is the homeschool planner that I'm going to be using again this homeschooling year. I have my erasable pens. These are some generic erasable pens. They're a lot cheaper than the other brand. What is it? The Fix, Fix Auron or whatever brand. I forgot what it's called, but... um. These are cheaper. I will link these down below and you get more pens and they work just as well. Um, I do have my um, erasable highlighters that I like to use as well. These, I didn't find an off brand for this one. So I just got the pilot ones for this. So that's my favorite. I have my big old bin of washi tape that I have been using. This is from last year, you guys. So I'm really, really excited. I love using washi tape when I do my reflections pages. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just give you guys an overview of how my planner looks. I haven't actually written in it yet but in my next video I will show you guys how it actually looks because I will be playing out like my curriculum and you'll actually see everything but I kind of wanted to give you guys like a blank overview of how the school nest planner does look so um, here is the beginning part where you can do like your index or your overview pages right here she just has them blank uh, right here this is my calendar so what I'm going to do is now that I have finalized my actual school year calendar I will go ahead and translate it right here my field trips, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and write them out right here that I want to do for the kiddos. Um, it has an attendance record right here. Uh, and this is perfect for me because I do, again, have to count out 180 days of school. 
So in the beginning, it has her, it has any classes that the kiddos are taking. None of my kiddos are taking any particular classes. Brielle's doing piano, but that's online. So this page, I probably will like uh, put washi tape and use it for something else because I love the, you know, flexible flexibility of this calendar. Curriculum overview, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of the core curriculum for each kiddo. So this might be Brielle's page, Leia's and Alana's page. Um, I have the book list. You guys, I love doing the book list where I I like print off a little teeny picture of the book and put it on these pages. So um, I'm really, really excited. I think what I'm going to do this year is just highlight our favorite books. And then um, I'll just go ahead and write out our full book list on like maybe the last page. So maybe the first two will be our fun. And then the last page, I'll just write out all the books that we've read. Um, it's so fun looking back at the books that we read at the end of the school year. So here is the curriculum progression chart, which I haven't seen many planners actually have this. And this is so fun when you get done with your six week term and you get to like highlight and shade like all of the curriculum progress that you actually have made. So I'm going to just do the core for each of the kiddos, mainly for Brielle and Leah, not necessarily Alana. Um, here is the month in review. So mine's is going to start off in July and I can just kind of like fill it out and get it started. So it's all of the months right here. I kind of put a little wash tape on the side because I was trying to see if I like that style so it has all of the months and then uh, when you get done with all the months you go into your weekly overview so here let's keep on going so like you guys can see a weekly overview okay all right so here goes the weekly overview so your week will start off with your weekly overview. And this is the page I will do like my reflections and pictures of the kiddos. You can do your weekly goals and note taking your schedule Monday through Sunday. Oh, wow, that's cool. So she even adds the weekends there. Um, that's cool because if you do a field trip on the weekend, you can kind of like add it there for your week. And then this page right here is your weekly plan. And um, like I said, I will show you guys how I set up this weekly plan uh, for my kiddos. I like to reverse plan. So what I would do is I would just write like math and uh, write like math with confidence, math you see primer for Leia, math for Brielle, I'll write uh, math you see Zeta, and I'll just write it across. And then as we complete each lesson, I will write down the lesson we completed. So when I begin, all I will be doing is just writing out the subjects and uh, what I have us plan to do, but I actually don't write what we do until we actually do it. So this is a little glimpse inside of my planner and I cannot wait to share with you guys um, how this looks when I set it up in my next video. Now for Brielle, you guys, I loved using a student planner for her and this is her student planner that she's gonna be using. It's the same exact one, it's a free printable. And again, I will link it down below for you guys. My description box is gonna be so full after today's video, but this was a free uh, planner, student planner that I used last year and she absolutely loved it. So Brielle will probably come in and fill out her planner on the first day of school. So uh, she has like, her uh, student version of mine where it has like all of the courses she's checking off and she's writing the days of the week that she's going to be doing it. I have um, a reading log for her so she can record all of her independent fun readers in here. Uh, this is her week at a glance. So it looks pretty similar to mine. And right here in the note section is typically where I will write like little notes for Brielle, um, especially like at night when I'm planning and she's sleeping and I kind of don't want to bother her. I would just write it right here so she knows, okay, well, mommy wants me to do page number this. I'll go ahead and add it right here. So that's kind of like how we utilize the note section right here for me. And then she fills out the rest of her weekly plan. On Mondays, we plan Monday and Tuesday. On Tuesdays, we plan Wednesday and Thursday and on Thursdays whatever we have left over she didn't finish we will go ahead and plug it in for Fridays like I was saying before so this was a completely free student planner and it worked out really really well for Brielle and she's used to uh, coming in filling out her planner and this really gave her a sense of independence and she didn't need me so as you guys can see like I'm working with my younger kiddos in the schedule uh, Brielle can look in her planner see what she has to do and say okay I can just do this next and I'm I'm just going to wait for mommy to get done and then we will have our time together. So, um, yeah, so you guys, this is how I plan out my um, homeschooling year and I'm so excited about my new school nest homeschooling planner.
Thank you guys so much for watching today's video of me planning out and sharing with you guys how I plan my homeschooling year. I really hope that this video was really helpful. I really hope you're able to really get a good glimpse of how I keep things really, really simple and flexible in planning out my homeschooling year. Uh, that's the one beauty of homeschooling is that we do have the flexibility and I like to keep it really flexible. I don't really, really box myself in. Um, I really want to leave in room in my year for uh, any types of pivots or changes that you know we may go through because I mean this is homeschool and life you know combined you guys so um stay tuned you guys for part two of my homeschooling planning videos and you guys as always thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one bye